Good morning, Mickey. Thank you for your purchase. This is your machine, the Breville Breezy Express BS870 in black. When I sent you the photos, it was a bit dirty. Now it's in much better condition. So the machine is in decent used condition. Um, it does have scratches around the front, some chips here, uh, some light scratches here on the right hand side where the milk sits, the milk jug sits. But other than that, it's a fully functional machine. I've done the service, checked all the uh, features, uh, put the machine under full pressure, checked for leaks, steam and water leaks, did the cleaning cycles, and uh, even set up the grinder. So to the right setting, so it should be ready to go. I'm just gonna make a video to sort of to teach you how to use the machine and to confirm that there's no issues. Um, Right, uh, I like to begin my sessions with warming up the machine. So you can either leave it on for 10 or 20 minutes to warm up, or you can quickly warm it up by running a blank shot. Get your cup, get your port filter, lock it in, press the double. That's going to give you some hot water, and it's going to warm up the machine pretty quickly. You can do that once or twice. You can do that twice. Awesome. Now the cup should be nice and warm. Put it on top here. I'm gonna make a latte, so um, testing all the features. Uh, I made a coffee only yesterday on grind size. Um, I think it was grind size two. That was a bit too fine. So I made another coffee at ground size five. That was better, uh, but I'll set up with my beans. So I'm using the Coles dark beans. Um, ground size number five, ground amount on one o'clock and using the double basket. Um, so the machine doesn't come with all the accessories, only the basics really, uh, what you need to make coffee with. So the pour filter basket and tamper and the milk jug. You can buy the others separately. I wouldn't say they're absolutely necessary to use right away, uh, but maybe in the future I consider buying the cleaning kit. That's the only thing I would bother with. If you don't have a scale, maybe get a scale to measure the coffee, at least initially when you set up the machine. Uh, well, I'm gonna set it up for you, just roughly put it in the ballpark for espresso. Uh, if you use different beans, you'll get different results. Uh, so don't depend on these settings to give you perfect coffee every time. These are just applicable to me with my beans. Uh, right, I'm gonna zero my scale. And then I'm gonna, let me just purge because the machine has been, has been here for a day and the coffee and they might be old. So let me just purge a bit. There we go, that's fine. Getting rid of the old coffee ground stuck in the, in the chute. And then now we're gonna start grinding properly. So I'm gonna do the single twice rather than doing the double in one go. This is the double basket takes 18 grams of coffee, uh, but I'm going to do it in two steps rather than in, rather than in one go. That's my first dose. Let's see. Eight and a half. That's good. Uh, I could do it to the two o'clock position, but I don't want to overfill. So I'm going to keep it there and then press. It's going to make space for the ne next dose. This is the key part to why I prefer this, the two step method rather than the one step method is you prevent the mess by compacting the first dose. Slowly take it out. And this looks like 17 and a half, 16.9. Um, I'll add a little bit more. So maybe if you do it at two o'clock position, maybe it'll be better. Um, so hopefully the two o'clock position should give you nine, nine point something. Once I've got my 18 grams in, grab my temper, grab 
press it nice and firm. If you don't have a scale, just look at the depth of the tamper. So the tamper has a silver part on it here, the silver cap. That should disappear. When it disappears, then you know you have the correct amount of coffee in there. That's what it looks like. So I like to use the streak farm in a, in a hurry. Don't have the time to, to, to use the scale. Uh, or the other way to think about it is before you tamp, it should be sort of level or flush with the rim. And then when you press it, the silver part should be flush with the rim or the line, that is. It's all good, all done. Lock it in the middle position. Um, there's this hot water I'm going to get rid of. You also have a hot water tap. You can use that for lots of things. Warming up your cups, brewing tea bags. I use it for adding a little bit of hot water to my drink so that the sugar dissolves nicely. Now, the last piece of the puzzle, so we spoke about a few things. We spoke about the ground amount, ground, sorry, ground size, ground amount. The third thing is the, the output and the timing. So the output is how much coffee you get out, and that's dictated by the button length here. The timing is actually dictated by the ground size. So if you have a finer ground size, it'll slow things down. So if I grind all the way to number three, or number two, I will basically choke the machine because the, the coffee grounds are so fine that the water literally can't go through them. On the other hand, if I do all the way to, say, ground size 15, what will happen is that the coffee grounds will be so large that water will just rush through them and you'll, you'll know. So when, you'll know when it, the coffee comes out too quick. It'll be gushing out of the spouts. You'll get very low pressure and the shot will actually come out very quickly. So your shot, usually it's 35 grams, 36 grams. So your 35 grams of espresso will come out in 10 seconds, which is way too quick. You'll see that in the taste as well. So it'll taste sour if it's too quick. It'll maybe be cold as well. Whereas on the other hand, if you do very bitter coffee, the pressure will skyrocket. The 36, 35 gram dose will probably take longer than 40 seconds, 50 seconds maybe. And it'll be dripping out, if anything. Uh, it'll be dripping out of the spouts rather than flowing smoothly. Um, so we want it to be in that middle Goldilocks position in, in the middle. So um, I made a coffee yesterday at number five and it was actually not too bad. A touch too slow, but not too bad. We'll see what we, what we do today. Um, I'll just advise you if it's too fine to go a little bit larger. Um, but yeah, uh, I will set up the button for you to give you that 36, to 36 gram dose. It's 36 because it's a two to one ratio. So for every, every gram of ground coffee you have coming out of the grinder, you want two grams coming into the cup. So 18 times two, 36. That's the standard two to one ratio. I'm also going to time it on my scale here. So we have our clock. Make sure I zero my scale. Sweet. And then I'm going to program the button if you want to program it. Obviously, I only do this in the beginning, not every single time. Program, then the button itself. I'm going to start making coffee. I'm going to stop it when I'm happy with the output. Should be fine. Uh, close, close to what I got yesterday, hopefully. Yeah, it, it's coming out nice and smooth out of the spouts. It appears nice thick crema one o'clock pressure very good it's exactly what we want we're at 25 seconds now I'll let it go for another five seconds that's exactly 30 seconds and let's see if we nailed it almost so we got 32 grams um if I let it go for another two seconds, we'll probably got in 36 grams, but this is a good shot anyway, within four grams of what we wanted, so um, pretty good shot. If you, if you ever get less than 30, maybe you can press the button again and get some more coffee, some more caffeine out of your shot. 32 grams is okay. It's pretty close. Um, this is what it looks like. Yeah, I could have let it go for another two seconds to get more output, closer to the 36 grams that we, we're aiming for. 
All the other thing you can do is just increase the grind size. So it's at number five now. If I increase it to six, which which is what I'll do actually for you, six, and then I will reduce this to one o'clock. So now, because if you increase this, this will um, the machine will grind faster. So I'm going to reduce the amount just a little bit. Hopefully now you get about nine grams. Hopefully you get a better flow. Um, and try to use good, decent beans. If you use cheaper, like. I'm not saying Coles beans aren't cheap, but they're pretty good in terms of quality and roast. Most of the other coffees I've test tasted in the supermarket have been roasted many months before, and then by the time you buy them at the supermarket, they're pretty old, pretty stale. So I wouldn't recommend you try all the supermarket beans, unless you want to. Uh, the best thing is, the best supermarket beans I've tasted are Aldi. Um, and those are the ones I usually use if I have the time to go to go around it. Now that's 36 grams now. The other thing, the best case scenario is buying your beans fresh from the roaster. That's the best thing you can do. That's what Braille recommends um, for the best taste. But of course that's more expensive and more hassle. So not everyone can afford that. For me personally, I'm pretty happy at the Aldi beans. Not just for the cost, they're actually pretty good beans and they uh, last a while. Great, so that's a good shot. Just quickly gonna clean. Just like that. Give it a quick flush. So the flush will actually clean the port filter and the shower screen and go in one motion, so I really recommend that. And if you have a tissue laying around, just give it a wipe. There's always a bit of coffee grounds left in the shower screen, uh, even after you flush. So I highly recommend you do that. Awesome. Next, steaming the milk. I'm just gonna pour my milk in there. It'll take a while. Steaming is a technique you'll have to learn if you haven't before. Turn on the steamer, wait 15 seconds for it to start steaming. Um, the technique is you keep the wand at an angle, you keep it close to the edge, and you try to keep the milk spinning. Now it's up for pressure. I'll turn it off. You have about five seconds after you turn it off to position yourself. Now it's spinning the milk. You want to keep it close to the surface for the first five seconds or so. And then after that you raise the jug. So you heard that hissing noise. When you raise, when you put the, the wand tip close to the surface of the milk, that hissing noise means you're injecting air into the milk and giving it that foam, that texture. If you hold that for too long, you'll get a very thick foam, like a cappuccino or even thicker. If you want a flat white or a latte, then you don't foam it for too long and to get that smoother milk texture. It's not an easy process, even I'm learning these days and I'm, I get it wrong sometimes, especially when I've got a camera pointing at me. And, I'm speaking I like steam as well. And when it's too hot to the touch, I'm just gonna turn it off. Give it a quick purge, just to clean the insides of any milk. And then grab a wet towel. Now the machine is cooling down, you'll see the buttons light up. When the buttons light up, that means that you're ready to make another coffee. it'll be really hard to clean later on so the sooner you clean it the better that's all the cleaning done for the day
now I'm just gonna pour the milk, break any big air bubbles by knocking the jug on the counter, swirling it up, and pouring it. There we go. That's a latte on the Boosty Express. Let me show you the result. Hope you enjoy. Um, any questions, please don't hesitate. Um, and I'll see you soon. Thanks.